What's up, guys? Eli here. Uh, back for a record label uh, spotlight video slash a horror movie collection video, um, which is kind of cool. It's been a while since I've done the, the, the horror stuff, um, and it's something I've really been wanting to get back into, so it's I'm glad to be doing that again. Um, I have unpacked, like, I don't know, half, maybe three quarters of my, uh, of my horror movies. Um, I've noticed some are missing, so there might be some gaps in, 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 in uh, there might be some gaps here, not that you would know anyways, but, uh, as I find them later on, you know, I'll probably just show the, all the leftovers. Um, they might not be as well alphabetized, but I, I don't think anyone cares, I'm just saying. If you notice, uh, if you notice some gaps in here or wonder why I don't have certain things, um, I might have them. They just might be kind of lost in the void. But anyways, the record label we're going to be talking about is a pretty cool label I only really learned about, like, this year. Um, it's a label out of uh, Chicago, Illinois, here in the U.S., uh, they formed around 2015. Uh, it's called Hoof Child Records. Um, they seem, from what I can tell, they seem to specialize in, in like the old styles of heavy metal. Um, you know, traditional heavy metal, uh, doom metal, um, hard rock type stuff. You know, early sounding, you know, early, early sounding heavy metal, uh, early speed metal sounding stuff like that. So kind of cool. Um, maybe similar to... Uh, just think uh, like Shadow Kingdom. Um, I think something like that, although Shadow Kingdom kind of specializes in like unearthing old, you know, heavy metal recordings. But they also put out new stuff too. But anyways, yeah, this the Who Child is kind of like Shadow Kingdom, I would say, which is a good thing. Um, I only have two albums from them, courtesy of Brian Arkham. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've mentioned these before in past videos. Um, but just based on these two that I've that I've heard, I, I can definitely recommend the label. You know, I definitely would plan on ordering stuff from them um, when I get the chance. You know, I'll, I'll check out their roster, their website, and stuff. But uh, first of all, we're going to be talking about, uh, um, in my opinion, the lesser of the two. Not to say that it's bad by any means. I did enjoy this. Um, this is a German band called Cherokee. Um, I won't be able to pronounce that album title. This is a four song EP. Is it four or five? Four songs, I think. Came out in 2017. And, uh, yeah. Nice presentation there. What we have here is I'm getting really late 70s, early 80s vibes. Um, like late 70s heavy metal. Um, early 80s heavy metal. So, you know, the very kind of the roots of what would become known as, you know, true heavy metal, um, uh, I mean, maybe not the roots, but like when things, you know, like, like late, uh, I mean, like early Judas Priest, um, you know, uh, late 70s Thin Lizzy, stuff like that, I'm even getting maybe some Scorpion vibes, um, Scorpions, uh, maybe even the early, early Iron Maiden, like first two albums, um, uh, vocals are, are, are high-pitched, um, high pitched but raw and gritty, um, kind of like in that in the in the vein of like you know the early new wave of uh, British heavy metal stuff. You know, not all those singers were uh, super technically gifted, but you know that's not what heavy metal is about. Um, we know that not everyone can sound like Ronnie James Dio or Rob Halford or Jeff Tate. Uh, that's just not the thing. Um, that's not a thing. Um, you know, it's it's cool when someone can sound, you know, that much better than you know, most of the other singers, but take, you know, I mean, look at Lemmy from Motorhead, look at, you know, look at, like, uh, you know, bands like Tank, and, and uh, uh, I mean, countless, countless uh, other uh, examples, you know, in that new world of, uh, new, I would say new world, new wave of British uh, heavy metal scene. Um, heavy metal is not about, uh, you know, being a, a world-class vocalist. Uh, that said, you know, the, this, this vocalist is, is good. Um, I like her vocals quite a bit, actually. Um, I definitely would not mind hearing more from this band. I just, it's not so much my cup of tea, at least nowadays. Um, I did definitely enjoy it. Um, but we're going to move on to this next band. I enjoy this quite a bit more. I, you know, and I've said this before, but I really do hate to play favorites. I don't do this to, to pick on anyone by any means, but uh, so this is a band out of Boise, Idaho, which is the state I live in. I live in the north part of Idaho. Boise's way down.
down south. I've never even been there. It's like 10 hours away. Anyways, we got by fire and sword. Uh, freedom will flood all things with light. Now, by fire and sword, I, I don't know if... Um, let me get some better light in here. I don't know. I, I've been trying to figure it out, and I don't know if this band is per se a religious band. Um, I haven't really figured that out yet. Uh, <clears throat> uh, on the Metal Archives channel, not the, or page, that, you know, not that they're the be-all, end-all of, of everything, but uh, it does say fantasy and religion for lyrical themes. I've read all the lyrics. They are definitely not overtly religious, or like, they're, they're, they don't scream like, uh, you know, Christianity to me, necessarily. So I, I think, I don't know, I... I, I, I don't like supporting anything. Uh, I would not want to intentionally support a Christian artist. Sorry, that's just me. Um, but I, I, I could be wrong, but I feel like um, it's probably the case that they just use it as, uh, use it, they, they, you know, they use maybe a little bit of religion as like, a, uh, just as a lyrical theme. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the band members, we got like, the Honorary Reverend Tim Tom Jones, Brother Jeffrey, Brother Michael, Brother Zachary, Brother Michael Francis. Uh, I don't think <laughs> if these guys were like Christians or whatever, I don't think they would do that. That would be kind of ridiculous. So I think it's more of a, I don't want to use the word gimmick because I mean, this is serious music. This is not like a gimmick band. Um, I, I, I am a sucker for theatrics, so I think it's kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, I'll, I'll quit rambling about that shit. Um, so what you're getting here is, uh, I guess I would kind of call this a doom metal album. Um, but not doom metal in the vein of like Black Sabbath or St. Vitus or anything like that, or even Trouble, or maybe Trouble. Uh, but this is more along, the, uh, you know, more more like early 80s epic doom, stuff like that. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit of early Trouble, a little bit of Candle Mass in there. I think, uh, uh, I, think I could kind of pick out... Um, and the funny thing is I'm really, really picky with modern traditional type metal. A lot of it just does not, it, uh, you know, I love all the classic stuff, but the modern stuff just doesn't do it for me most of the time. Um, this is one of the rare bands that, uh, that have, I have really enjoyed. Um, I, I, I see a lot of potential here. Uh, this is a good EP. This is, this is their debut. Um, I think if they do things right, if they play their cards right, if they take you know, if they're diligent, um, I think, you know, I think they could become like the next maybe Visigoth or something like that. Um, the singer here, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the modern heavy metal bands, that's kind of where they get me usually is the vocals. There's something about the vocals that turns me away. And, and this guy is actually really good. Um, I think, uh, I think he could benefit from taking like some getting some vocal lessons, um, getting some, like, some, uh, what would you call it, uh, um, getting some, some actual, you know, like a vocal coach, getting some actual training. He's really good, but I think he, I, I, and why I say that is because I think he has so much potential that with, with a little bit of help, I think he could, um, you know, I think he, he could be, like, a top-tier metal singer, um, for, you know, as far as the dudes that are out there nowadays, um, so yeah, you know, there, there's definitely touches of epic doom here. It's not um, the entirety of the music. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of traditional type heavy metal. There's some some epic heavy metal stuff going on. Um, the musicianship is way better than I expected it to be. Um, the guitarists are really good. There are some really, really killer riffs here. Uh, melodic, like epic sounding riffs. Sometimes almost even slightly proggy um, these these I think there are two guitarists in this band and they are really good um, and back to the back to the vocalist uh, he at times he kind of reminds me just at times but he kind of reminds me of uh, like early John Arch from Fate's Warning I'd be surprised if if he would say or state that he takes no inspiration from John Arch I'd be shocked I think that's probably been an inspiration for him as far as you know, developing his own style, um, and that's a, that's a good thing. So, uh, I definitely recommend this album. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely recommend them both. 
but this one, you know, this is this this one's just more my cup of tea. Um, yeah. So moving on to the movies, these aren't all exactly horror movies. I, I typically collect only like ninety five percent horror movies. I don't buy much else. But every now and then I'll like a movie so much, and it'll be just kind of on the darker side that I'll I'll just kind of lump it in with horror. Um, so there might be a few here like that. This movie I bought, I think I bought this late last year, still haven't gotten around to watching it, goddammit. Um, I need to put it on my, lit, my watch list. Um, but I bought this because it was a, uh, Dan O'Bannon wrote the screenplay, Dan O'Bannon from Alien. Um, I'm definitely a Dan O'Bannon fan, whenever I see his name, I buy. Uh, we have Dead and Buried, very nice uh, blue underground version. Cool, got a glossy cover. Blue Underground is a, is a cool uh, uh, yeah, movie company, whatever you want to call it. They put out really, really good, uh, really good quality stuff. It folds out like that. It's got two discs, bonus features and stuff like that. Um, so this is a sort of a zombie movie. From what I know, it's, it's quite legendary. Um, just haven't gotten around to watching it. Maybe I'll watch it this weekend. I, I do have the time now, so... That could be cool. Um, a lot of you watching right now have probably seen it, so yeah. This one, I'll just breeze through this because I showed this in a fairly recent uh, collection or new stuff video is what I like to call them. Dead Girl. Uh, kind of a crazy movie. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it since it was new, but uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, I'll just, I'm going to kind of skip on that one for now. Um, <laughs> these movies I've been wanting to see for a long time, and I finally, recently, within the last year, got uh, got some of these. Uh, I got Demonic Toys 2. It was a lot of fun. It's a, uh, I don't know, it, it's a full moon uh, feature, of course. I don't know what Charles Band's uh, obsession with dolls is, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> Puppet Master, Demonic Toys, and he's... He's got a thing for that, I guess. Um, but he's good at it. Bought this, uh, bought this full moon uh, three pack with uh, demonic toys. The first one, Dollman and uh, Dollman versus Demonic Toys. Um, I haven't watched the first Demonic Toys actually. Oddly enough, Dollman though was fucking great. Um, gee, yeah, that was a that was a major shocker for me. I don't know if anyone here has seen Dollman. Um, awesome very very good it's uh yeah it's it's about like this uh this cop from the planet arcturus who uh, uh gets stranded on earth um via his uh spaceship and he is they call him doll man because he's like he's like a foot tall uh, <laughs> i think uh, if i remember correctly that's just how tall everyone is on his planet so uh, he comes to earth and yeah he's tiny uh, but it's 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 a super entertaining kind of low budget sci fi movie. Um, it's it was a blast. The Dentist from the creators of Reanimator, which is definitely why I bought this. Um, bought this for Brian Usna, directed it. Um, haven't watched it yet. Corbin Burnson's in it. Huh? I just bought this. Uh, um, yeah, I just bought this like a few months ago. So I just you know how I am. I haven't gotten around to it, but. Super excited. This movie I had wanted to get for a long time. Finally got it like last year, and I have watched it. It's really, really good. It's one of uh, Guillermo del Toro's early movies. Got the Devil's Backbone. Um, filmed in, uh, I think it was, was it filmed in Mexico. I, I don't know, but it's about the Spanish Civil War. Um, it's uh, I, I calling it a horror movie is kind of a kind of a stretch. Um, it's definitely like a, a ghost story, but there's so much more to it than that. It's uh, it's also a, you know it's definitely a drama. Um, it's it's really good, beautifully beautifully done. Um, I, you could probably call this a masterpiece, especially for you know considering Del Toro. I mean, this is from. I guess it's 2002. It's not super old, but uh, I don't know. It's not it's not his first movie by any means, but uh, I don't know. 
it's just just watch it. Definitely, definitely check this one out. Uh, Devil's Backbone. So here's one of the movies that I was kind of mentioning. Uh, this is not at all a horror movie, actually, but uh, it is uh, directed by David Cronenberg, who's you know one of the best horror directors of all time. And you know, every now and then he'll do stuff that's not horror because you know, I'm sure it's nice to branch out once in a while. Um, this is actually like a like a crime drama, you know, slash mafia movie. It's about uh, about the Russian mob. Um, 2003, well, it's that old already. Uh, you probably already guessed it, but we got Eastern Promises. Uh, one of my favorite movies of the last 20 years, definitely. Um, Viggo Mortensen absolutely kills it in this movie. Definitely watch that. Not only if you're a fan of David, Cro David Cronenberg, but if you're just a fan of, of you know mafia movies and crime dramas and stuff like that, it's, it's so good. Eaten Alive. Directed by everyone's favorite, uh, Toby Hooper. Um, not Toby's greatest film by any means. Of course, you know, he never really quite lived up to the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In my opinion, he definitely never touched those heights uh, again. But, I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a fun movie. Um, you guys might have seen that. I got this kind of cool uh, two-disc special edition uh, from 1976. I show the back. Um, yeah, it's basically got the main, uh, one of the main characters there on the front with his scythe, and, uh, this motherfucker's got a pet alligator, he owns a hotel, he kills people and feeds them to his pet alligator, it's, it's pretty good, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, well, it's 1976, but it's very gritty and, uh, and, uh, you know, exploitation-y. Uh, it's it's pretty good. It's 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 like I said. It's nowhere near as good as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But uh, you know, if you're a fan of old classic horror, I think you definitely at least need to give it a watch. All right, I bought this a couple years ago. Still haven't gotten around to watching it. Um, I was at this uh, store in my town. Uh, it sells a lot of cool horror movies and. And I was just browsing through one day their horror section. I found it looked like somebody had just like sold their uh, their cannibal movie collection because I just found like four or five of them, uh, all used, all at the same time. And I, I bought them all up, of course. Um, so this is a uh, Eaten Alive Mangiati Vivi uh, in Italian, right? Um, I don't know actually a whole lot about this movie. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice release, I guess you'd say. Anamorphic white, what the fuck? Anyway, I don't know what anamorphic means. Anamorphic white screen? Okay. Uh, yeah, so who put this out? Shriek Show Horror? Shriek Show? Um, yeah. When did this one come out? I assume probably 70s, maybe early 80s. Yeah, I just... I don't know a lot about this one. Um, if anyone knows, uh, clue me in. It's definitely an Italian cannibal film, <laughs> which there were a lot of those around this time, I'll, and I definitely tried to uh, track them all down. Um, cannibal Holocaust obviously being the big daddy of that genre. Uh, but, it, yeah, that is the gold standard pretty much. But, uh, yeah, I try, to, I try to watch the rest. I have to throw this in my to-watch pile, of course, which is going to get rather big, as you can tell. And last but not least, would not really call this a horror movie at all. Um, I guess it is kind of creepy at times. I would call it more of a sci-fi. Uh, but anyways, we got uh, The Endless. Um, so these two guys, uh, um, Justin Benson and uh, Aaron Moorhead, uh, they're kind of like a directing team. Um, you know, they're both directors. They've done several movies together. And all of the, all of the ones I've seen so far have been really good. Um, they did a movie after this, I think after this. Maybe before it, I don't know. Before or after it called Spring. And I really, really liked Spring. Um, this one was pretty good. Uh, I might have to give it another watch because I think some of it did kind of go over my head. It's, it's, uh... Like I said, I would call it more of a sci-fi movie. It's about like these uh, these two brothers who uh, were in like a 
weird religious cult when they were kids and they got out um, they got out at one point and now that they're adults they actually they want to go um, you know pay 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 uh, pay them a visit because you know they got out of it but they still kind of had you know attachments you know feelings of attachment to some of the people in the cult um, and they, they just wanted to you know to stop by and say hello and, and it just kind of goes from there um, it's a pretty ambitious story uh, the script and everything it's it's pretty good uh, I don't know if I liked it as much as some I mean some people really worship this movie uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not you know getting down on them or anything like that I do think it's pretty damn good but uh, some like I said some of it might have went over my head um, so these guys uh, several of their movies that they've directed um, all kind of tie together at least in ways which I always think shit like that's really cool so um, yeah they still have at least one more movie I need to track down but uh, if anyone's seen The Endless what do you think? Uh, man comic book of the day I forgot to do that in my last video this is the third uh, issue and last that I have in this series uh, so it's a six issue series I need to get the, the last three but uh, six section 8 six pack dog welder written by the mighty Garth Ennis um, cover art by the mighty Steve Dillon and it's, it's been fun um, I don't, I've never really read a lot of DC stuff but uh yeah, for DC, this you know the series is definitely a little bit more gritty, a little bit more um, edgy, and uh, yeah, it's been fun, fun enough for me to want to get the you know the remaining three issues of, of the series. So, has anyone read this at all? I, I don't know. Pretty good, I thought. Um, but anyways, that's all I got for now. Um, more stuff coming. Uh, I'm always uh, I'm always coming up with ideas. The only problem is I don't always use those ideas. But uh, I'm trying to kind of break out of my comfort zone and, you know, keep things fresh, I guess you could say. So we'll see how I do. I still have more reviews coming um, that I'm working on. I'm very slow with, with, with that kind of shit. So, um, but I got some stuff coming. Hopefully it's worth your time. Uh, but as always, thanks for stopping by. We will talk soon. Cheers. Louis says hello or, and goodbye. See you guys.